Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Carrier to Noise Measurements. In this short presentation, we'll provide an introduction to carrier to noise measurements and explain how these measurements are made using modern spectrum analyzers. This presentation assumes a very basic understanding of how spectrum analyzers are configured and operated. If you're not familiar with spectrum analyzers, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation before beginning this presentation. In radio frequency systems, a carrier is a signal that conveys or carries information. In most cases, information is conveyed by changing the frequency, amplitude, and or phase of the carrier. On the other hand, noise is undesired or non-useful power. Noise is normally measured over or within a frequency range or bandwidth, and therefore wider bandwidths will mean a greater amount of noise power. Carrier to noise ratio, also abbreviated CNR, is the ratio of the carrier power to the noise power. This ratio is expressed in units of dBc, that is the difference in dB between the carrier power, C, and the noise power. Generally speaking, a high carrier to noise ratio is always desirable, in part because a certain minimum CNR is needed for reliable signal reception and demodulation. In modern digital modulation systems, a higher carrier to noise ratio corresponds to lower bit error rates. For example, the points on this signal constellation will become less distinct or more spread out as the carrier to noise ratio decreases. In addition, as modulation order, that is the number of states or symbols increases, the carrier to noise ratio normally must also increase in order to maintain the same bit error rate. One of the most common areas where carrier to noise ratio is used is in satellite applications. For example, a typical received GPS signal will have a carrier to noise density ratio of somewhere between about 35 and 50 dBc per hertz. Note that satellite receivers in the same location will see approximately the same carrier strength, but may have widely differing carrier to noise ratios due to different amounts of received or internally generated noise. Another area where carrier to noise ratio is often used is in the cable television industry. In fact, various cable TV standards and technical recommendations explicitly specify an acceptable carrier-to-noise ratio, although this number will change based on factors such as the channel bandwidth and the modulation type. Before we go on, let's pause for a minute to discuss the difference between carrier-to-noise ratio and signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. In most cases, these terms are used more or less interchangeably, but there are some industries, in particular the cable television industry, that sometimes make a distinction between carrier-to-noise and signal-to-noise. If and when a distinction is made, it usually refers to the point at which the signal is measured. In this case, carrier-to-noise is an RF measurement made on signals prior to detection or demodulation. This is contrasted with signal-to-noise, which is defined in this case as a baseband measurement made on signals after they have been detected or demodulated. SNR will therefore include any noise added during the detection or demodulation process, and thus is sometimes a better measure of end-to-end -end performance. That said, it's worth repeating that in everyday usage, the terms carrier-to-noise and signal-to-noise are often used interchangeably. Carrier-to-noise ratio is normally measured using a spectrum analyzer. It's generally a very simple measurement to configure. The user defines a channel bandwidth, selects the RMS detector, since power is being measured, and sets an appropriate span, typically twice the channel bandwidth. The user must also select a type of ratio, either carrier-to-noise, or carrier to noise density. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain the difference between these two types of ratios 
and provide more detail into how both of them are measured. When making a carrier to noise measurement, the largest signal within the spectrum analyzer span is defined as the carrier with power C. A channel bandwidth must also be defined, and the noise power N is then obtained by essentially integrating between the channel limits. In the case of a carrier to noise density measurement, the noise power measured within the channel is normalized to a 1 Hz bandwidth. We'll talk more about this on the next slide. The values of carrier power and noise or noise density power are then used to calculate the ratio of carrier to noise. Carrier to noise is usually shown in units of dBc and carrier to noise density in units of dBc per hertz. And as mentioned a few moments ago, an RMS detector is used because these are power measurements. Let's come back to the topic of noise density. In many, if not most cases, noise power is constant across the channel or bandwidth of interest. Noise that is uniformly distributed over frequency is often referred to as white noise. In this case, noise can be normalized to a 1 Hz bandwidth by dividing the total channel noise N by the channel bandwidth B. The result is noise density, usually abbreviated N and naught. You may also hear this referred to as noise power density, spectral noise density, noise spectral density, noise power spectral density, etc. Regardless of which name is used, this quantity describes the noise present in a bandwidth of 1 Hz and thus has units of dBc per Hz. If the carrier lies outside of the user-defined channel bandwidth, as shown here, only a single sweep is needed to measure both the carrier and the noise. However, if the carrier were within the channel bandwidth, the carrier power would be included when integrating over the channel and the noise measurement result would be incorrectly high. In this case, a two-step measurement process is needed. First, a single sweep is run, and the power in the carrier is measured. Then the carrier is switched off, and a second sweep is run to measure the noise alone. In this way, the carrier-to-noise ratio can be calculated and displayed automatically by the spectrum analyzer after the second measurement sweep is complete. Before we conclude this presentation, it's worth pointing out that varying the channel bandwidth in a carrier-to-noise measurement will affect the results. The carrier-to-noise ratio will decrease as channel bandwidth increases, assuming of course that the carrier power remains constant. This is because wider bandwidths will increase the total noise power and thus lower the carrier-to-noise ratio. On the other hand, because carrier-to-noise density normalizes the noise to a 1 Hz bandwidth, changing the channel bandwidth does not lead to any significant change in carrier-to-noise density, assuming, of course, that the noise is white or uniformly distributed across the channel bandwidth. Let's end with a brief summary. Carrier-to-noise measurements are the ratio of the power in a carrier, C, compared to the power in the surrounding noise, N. This noise is measured within a defined bandwidth or channel. If this noise power is then normalized to a 1 Hz bandwidth, the result is noise density and not. Carrier to noise is a common measurement in both cable television and satellite applications. When measuring carrier to noise, the carrier may be within the channel and in this case, the carrier must be turned off during the noise measurement in order to avoid having the carrier power included in the noise power. This is sometimes called the two-sweep method, since the first sweep is used to measure the carrier, and the second sweep is used to measure the noise without the carrier present. Note, too, that the channel bandwidth will affect carrier-to-noise results, since wider channel bandwidths will increase the amount of measured noise. But, in a carrier-to-noise density measurement, the normalized noise value means that the bandwidth should not significantly impact the measurement results. And finally, although in many cases the terms 
carrier-to-noise and signal-to-noise are used more or less interchangeably, a distinction is made in certain applications. When this distinction is made, carrier-to-noise usually refers to an RF measurement, and signal-to-noise refers to a baseband measurement. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Carrier-to-Noise Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about other spectrum measurements or spectrum analyzers from Rohde and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.